Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up, people? Welcome back to another edition of Mike on Sports. I am your host. I go by the name of Mike Gross, man. Big ups to that 501 and that 317. We back, we back, we back. And I'm here to talk about a little bit of Earl Spence and uh, Sean Porter come out and said, hey, man, I really think I won that fight. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to dive into that. Also, we got the ongoing beef, ongoing Twitter feud with Dillian White, and Andy Ruiz, so we'll chop that up, break that down, and let you know what each guy came to their social media and posted. Uh, y'all know what it is. Mike, drop that beat on them. Yes, sir. Man, I hope, I hope, I hope everybody had a good weekend. Blessed, blessed, blessed to be Monday. We made it to Monday, baby. Hopefully this this coronavirus shit is dying down. But uh, yeah, man, a little bit about my weekend, man. I just spent it playing a lot of, a lot of mad, you know what I'm saying? I'm really coming off a hot streak, you know what I'm saying? I want to get back on after I do this show, you feel me? I just won like four in a row. But uh, also I've been checking out some good new shows, man. If you guys haven't seen gangs of london definitely check that out check that out that's highly recommended by your boy mg uh that shit right there was crazy man the underworld in london man that shit is savage bro like if you ain't for the faint of heart that might not be for you because it's some it's some gruesome ass fighting scenes in the gangs of, of london so big ups to that show what else i've been doing man oh yeah man watched the michael jordan documentary last night i, I actually done watched it up to episode eight you know what i'm saying that shit leaked online so you know me i had to go ahead and and get my little sneak peek in so i checked it out up to episode eight very 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 good documentary not gonna give you guys any spoilers or any, any anything like that but i did go back and rewatch the last night shows you know what i'm saying and i did a reaction video it's posted to my page it just uh overall man it's just a a amazingly good documentary man like it really gets on the inside of uh of uh the bulls and michael jordan to for that matter but yeah man weekend's been pretty good man uh, uh did i do anything spectacular no nah, man not really not really but enough about your boy let's go ahead and get into this boxing talk man you know like i know these two guys have been on social media Going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, talking about, oh, you didn't see this, you didn't see that. I'm just trying to figure out where is this going to end up, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you really want to want, want to fight each other, social media, man, it's cool, it's, it's good for the fans, but you guys can, like, negotiate, man. Al, Al Heyman done did business with, with Andy Ruiz and uh, Eddie Hearn before, so... I'm sure if if the offer coming in and and it's right, then shit, I don't see why the fight can't happen. But let's get to what each guy said before before we get into anything else. All right. First, Andy Ruiz came to his Twitter. He said, "Yo, Dylan White, stop cloud chasing. You never offer five million dollar hashtag lies." So I'm looking at that right. First, my first thought was, does Andy have clout? <laughs> Is Andy out here really like, like the guy who, who say he got clout? What, what you got clout from? You got clout for being champion overnight? I know I call it overnight I'm, and I've been a little harsh, but he ain't, you know what I'm saying? He ain't defend the belt. He only had it for the time between the the next fight. And he lost the, the, the next fight. Uh, got pretty beat up in the next fight. Came out of shape in the next fight. I know you love fashion, know what pod, and I see you on Instagram doing your little pictures and showing off your cars and doing sh your shit with Dank City. But are you the, really the, the the guy to say I got the clout? Quick clout chase? How he clout chasing? It seems like, and just from the outside looking in, it seems like Dylan White is is more than enthusiastic about fighting you. So how is that clout chasing? He's coming for your head. He really, really, really wants to fight 
with Andy Ruiz. And I know some people out there are going to be like, Mike, Mike, how dare you? What about when Dylan and White was cloud chasing Wilder and he was he was yelling Wilder then? Now Wilder's the champion. He he had things that he had to do. How many times do we see other boxers calling out champions and they don't get what they want? We see it with Devin Haney all the time. We see it. Uh, we should be seeing them in every division. Gary Russell Jr. calling out Leo and Carl Frampton and Alvin Morris before those guys decided to move up. And so we see it at 160. Charlo calling out Canelo. A lot of guys, Andre calling out uh, Canelo, Andre calling out Charlo. So we see Carlos out of time. And uh, sometimes, like, uh, in, in the Wilder situation, it, it, he had things he had to take care of. You know what I'm saying? He had the Ortiz first fight. Then he had the fight with his mandatory Brazil. Then he had the Ortiz next fight. Then he had the Fury fight. So it wasn't like he wasn't fighting the, the, the opposition. You know what I'm saying? He was fighting pretty good opposition. And the, the only reason I'm saying it seems like Dylan White is, is the one who really wants to fight. Um, he's the one who's vocal about the offer being sent out. He's the one out here showing uh, text messages and shit. So let me show you all the Demi text message that, that, that Dylan White posted to his uh, IG. Well, IG and probably fucking, fucking Twitter. He says, excuse me, fat boy. At Andy Destroy One. Stop talking shit facts. Our facts stop coming. Come on. Stop talking shit facts. Our facts stop come on. I don't know what the fuck that means. Maybe somebody else gotta read it to me. Cause that shit just lost me. But it says uh found and sent mailbox. So this this was sent by uh Eddie Hearn to uh Ruiz. Uh I, and it says hi Tom, and I'm I'm guessing Tom is like his manager or something. Further to our recent emails, we would like to make a new offer of $4 million to Andy to fight Dylan White in June in, in, in the U.S. So there's, they're like, this is saying, like, we want to fight you in June and the, in the U.S. And it says, uh, we offered $4 million. You should go back and say, sorry, I checked with Eddie. We offer you four million. Do you have do do we have a deal at five million? And I will get it done. So he's saying shit. If you guys really want to fight, just go back and renegotiate, man. Like if you want five million and they sent sent you a four million dollar offer, I, I don't know why why it just seems like some fighters are opposed to like negotiating fights or or shit like that. Like I I I, I don't get it. Like if they sent you an offer and it's only one million more that you want, you know what I'm saying? Like, go out there and get that one million more. It's not rocking science. You be like, hey, Andy, man, we fighting in the U.S., man. I'm gonna need five million dollars. I'm not, I, I want to be the clear cut, no doubt, a side. So I want the bigger purse, and I want to fight on my soil, and I want to fight on the West Coast, maybe in Vegas, maybe in Cali. That's what you do. You don't take the fucking social media and say, nah, nah, nah. Y'all didn't do this. Y'all didn't do that. It's proof that something went down. It's proof that something went down. And I don't know who wins this fight. Like it, it, it's, it's a very competitive fight. And it'll be a high stakes fight. It'll be a fight with a lot on the line. Dylan White is the number one contender for the WBC title after Fury and and, uh, and Wilder get get uh, get that third trilogy on. Dylan White is next up. So if you're Andy Ruiz and you go out and be Dylan White, guess what? You right back in the mix for that title shot. You are the new number one contender for that title. It's not rocket science. If you need a fight in between, just let that be known. Like Dylan White, hey, bro, I hear you. But I got plans right now. Maybe we can revisit that early next year. But in, in the fall, I've been out the ring for almost a year uh, uh, when, when my next fight will happen. So I'm going to need somebody that – that maybe not be on your on your level. Cause Dylan White, you no know, sense to his credit, had been active. Would have would have fought uh uh Pavekin by now, but we know I don't know why that didn't happen. But it's all kind of ways, you know what I'm saying, that they can spend this. You know what I'm saying? Let Andy get get one fight off and then he fights Dylan White. Or or like I I just don't understand like going to social media and trying to trying to call a guy a liar, or both parties, you know what I'm saying, trying to make each other look bad. Get your ass in the office and get a deal done. With that being said, man, let's go ahead and move on to the 
to the next topic. And, and yeah, real, real thing, real quick. Say what you want to about Eddie Hearn. You call him a scoundrel. You call him a weasel. You can call him any motherfucking thing you want to. You can call him uh, conniving. One thing you can't call him. One thing you can't call him is a guy who is not trying to make a fight. You can't call you you cannot call him not a promoter. He definitely is out there trying to make fight for 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 his guys and really really uh trying to put some good fights on for the fans. Trying to give us all the fights that we want to see. Charlo Andre, Tevin Former, and uh goddamn uh, Javante Davis. Uh fucking this fight right here, you know what I'm saying? Dylan White, Andrew Ruiz. So he's out here percolating and trying to get things done. I, I just feel like I, I had to say that. But moving right along, let's get to it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Sean Porter thinks he beat Earl Spence. Sean Porter, I believe he uh talked about this on his uh I don't know where he talked about, about this at. Who he talked about this to? He said a uh he talked about this in a recent Facebook Live interaction. So we're gonna go out to the uh story and we're gonna share that screen. Uh, saying big ups to Keith Otic for the uh, uh uh article boxing scene. If you don't know what boxing scene is, go check it out. It's where you can get all the latest news and updates about the sport that we so much love, the sport of boxing. But enough about that. Let's go ahead and get into the story. Keith Otis says, there was a point in the fourth or fifth round when Sean Porter pulled back, then caught Earl Spence with a counter right hand. Spence cursed in frustration, according to Porter, because he got hit with a power. Porter shouldn't be able to land. That's when Porter suspects he has Spence in their welterweight unification fight nearly seven months ago in Los Angeles. Spence dropped Porter in the 11th round and won a split decision, yet Porter firmly feels he did enough to win win that highly competitive contest September 28th at Staples Center. I thought I'd be Spence. When I heard split decision, I thought it was going to be a split draw. I really did think that I beat him. I know I gave him a boxing lesson. And if a rematch is there for me, I would love to do it. Now, first thing that, that, I, that I thought about when I was reading this story, like, I thought I beat him. First thing you said. But then when you said, you, when you heard the decision called out, you were like split draw. Why would you like that? Because of the knockdown? You 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 thought that they were uh, uh, going to penalize you for that? If you thought it beat them, man, you thought it beat them through, through and through. Even when the damn decision came out, you thought it was going to be a split decision in your favor. I don't, I don't want to hear you. You 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 thought it was a split, going to be a split draw when you heard the uh, a decision because – that can lean some fans to you to say, shit, he really thought he lost then. He really thought he he didn't do enough to win. Let's be honest, man. That's what the critics gonna say. That's what the detractors are gonna say. They're gonna talk about how bad his suits are, talk about how bright they are. They're gonna talk about he he's he gonna get a split decision draw. All right, man. Two judges, Ray Dan, Dan Esco and Steve Weisfeld. Scored a 116-111. Uh, and Larry has a junior scored at eight rounds for Porter, 115-112. Uh, the 32-year-old Porter, who lost his WBC title to Spence, completely dis uh, disagrees with now Desco was in Whitefield view their Fox Sports pay-per-view main event. The fight with myself and Earl Spence, I think a lot of people thought that he, he was the guy who was going to, you know, put me out. Yeah, and let me start right there because it was a lot of people calling in uh, when I was on the boxing voice. A lot of people calling in, not giving Sean Porter a chance, not giving Sean Porter a chance in hell. And I was telling everybody, I was letting you know from the motherfucking mountaintop, this was not going to be an easy fight for Earl Spence at all. This was going to be a dog fight. This was going to be a fight that he had to dig down and really and really show that he had that grit. Because Sean Porter, one thing that that, that you can always say. He's going to give motherfuckers a tough fight. Sean Porter gave Keith Thurman a tough fight. He gave Danny Garcia a tough fight. He gave Kel Brook, who was clinching like a motherfucker. He was clinching. That's the reason why he got those things off. And he gave Earl Spence one. So at, when, when it's at the top, 
when it's top tier, top level, oh, you can expect Sean Porter to be all in, and you can always expect Sean Porter to be in fabulous shape. I'm talking about the boy stay, the boy, the boy got a goddamn me uh, uh engine like a motherfucking Hemi. That bitch don't never get tired. Sean Porter goes on to say, I think, first of all, let me say that he's another one of those great fighters. Just knows what to do. Knows how to do it and can really get down in the ring. But I knew some things about myself that, that not many other people know. And I think one thing about me is I don't shy away from a challenge. I actually love challenges. And you can see it in his fighting style. You can see it in his, in his grit, his will to bite, bite down on his goddamn me gum shield. I thrive in challenges. And so when that fight was made with myself and Earl Spence, I took it as, you know, the biggest challenge that could be. And you know, for me, I look at the big things and small things. You know, so where you may have saw I was a step or two behind of him for majority of the fight, those who don't recognize that or don't believe that or don't doubt that, you're wrong. I was a step or, or two ahead of him the majority of the fight. Gotta say, I, I I would agree. I would agree with the movement, with the uh, with the re reversal on the uh, on the ropes. You know what I'm saying? He did an excellent job switching his back from the ropes and putting Earl Earl Spence Jr. back on the ropes. I thought he did a excellent job. Copy box credited Spence who retained his IBF title for landing 40 more overall punches than Porter. According to Copy Box un unofficial account, Spence connected with more power punches and jabs. Look, man, I'm not a big fan of, of that copy box. It's just a person back there pushing the button, and maybe they fall asleep sometimes. Because sometimes I just be watching the, the damn EV screen, and I'm just like, are you serious? Are you serious? That that cannot be the right number. It cannot be the right number. But all in all, man, I would actually love to see that fight again. I know I know, it's not something that, that, that most fans want right now. We all want the big super fight with – uh with uh fucking spence and crawford you know what i'm saying that's the biggest fight of the what division well we'll we'll even take a damn me pacquiao fight with one of those young guys you know what i'm saying so uh but i think sean porter deserves another crack at it you know what i'm saying he, he really went out there and gave uh his all oh man now we got some 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 shit talking this is coming out from uh from chris eubank Junior, one of my favorite guys in boxing, but he's going at one of my my other favorite guys in boxing, Jamal Charlo. Chris Eubank says uh, the WBA interim champion Eubank is very eager to get his hands on Jamal Charlo for the WBC 160 crown. Eubank is not the most light individual in boxing. That's an overstatement. <laughs> I think uh, Eubank is polarizing. I think he makes it, makes himself polarizing. I think he kind of enjoys it from a uh, from a uh, uh, condescending standpoint. But he believes Charlo is far more despised by the boxing public. Eubank is talking to Sky Sports. He says, "I bumped into him a couple of times." We had a press conference before both of our fights in New York. He is not a likable guy. Some people say I am arrogant and cocky, but I, I, I'm down to earth. Decent guy. This guy here is in the clouds. He thinks that he's more than he is. I would take great pleasure in taking him down a peg or two. Damn, he said, he said, Charlo got an ego. He ego, tistical, you know what I'm saying, in the ring. You know, whoa. Uh, damn, say he's not likable. <laughs> hey, man, I, I think uh, opposites attract, man. When like, uh, Charlo might be the Eubank of the other uh, station, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but Eubank goes on to say, absolutely, I don't like his character. He got the belt, so it will it will always be an interest. Anyone with a belt in my weight division, I want to fight. At this stage of my career, I can't afford to take a, any steps back. So title fights and big names are what I want. Yeah, man, you're getting older because you ain't you ain't you ain't the same you bang that I that I came in the in the uh boxing world watching, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, you you going like after this coronavirus, man, it's gonna be a lot of wave or just I think excellent cars because people people are gonna have to start getting their 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 fighters out. And uh I hope, you know what I'm saying? I hope to see 
you banking Charlo mate. He goes on to say, he hasn't fought anyone. He hasn't fought any big test. Until he fights someone like me, we will never know how good he is. Anyone can look big and strong and fast against weak opponents. That's all he had in his career. Until he fights someone like me, he will find out that this isn't the game he thought it was. Oh, he coming at his resume. Saying, Ian, you ain't beat nobody. Everybody you fought with was small guys. You was you was way draining at 154, like some people would, 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 would like to say. I'm not one of those people. I believe it. if you can make a make a weight, should you should you ain't draining, nigga. You made the weight. You feel me? And you was a champion. I, I would say I, I I think that J Rock win looks good, but uh, it might not look as good as as it did. But he still was a unified champion. And, and, and J Rock, I believe uh, the um, the Austin Trout victory was a good victory for him. Uh, but at 160. At 160, I would say you can have to agree because Charlo didn't get a shot at Canelo. His uh, Brandon Adams, somebody moved up from 154. Uh, the guy from uh, from Ireland. What was my dude name? The Fahame Mangia. Damn, down in Mexico. Uh, Hogan. Dennis Hogan. He, he was a guy moving up from 154. Uh, my guy with the fucked up leg. They fought at 160. I can't even think of his name, but it, his leg was shot. Then he had my guy, Hugo Centennio. Uh, who was moving up from 154? So I guess you you could say, you no know one saying that his record is not is not uh, um, that strong at 160, but it's not due to him. You no know one saying he just can't get the fights that he wants. But I guess if this fight happens, we'll be in for a fucking treat, <laughs> won't we? Yes, sir. But let's get back to it, man. Y'all know what it is. Shout out to everybody out there watching, everybody out there supporting, man. I really do. So I uh, appreciate you guys, man. Till next time, y'all know what it is. This has been Mike on Sports, and we do this shit every day. Yes, sir.